Lisa. Hoy a lo tu papá. Enrique Garcia, checking to see if lunch is ready. It is. Enrique lives in the quiet harbor town of Ensenada on the Baja California Peninsula of Mexico. He leaves his wholesale grocery heading home. After a stop to see his friend Jose and to pick up a 6LQ6. One of these days, he's going to move his antenna into the backyard. Enrique is a ham, an amateur radio operator, even as I. This is the shack. Matt Futterman, 17, high school senior. Matt is stringing up a new 40-meter inverted V here in Woodland Hills, California. Under the screen and into the shack. And the new antenna is ready for the test. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Mexico calling. X-ray Echo 2, Radio Hotel. CQ. Sharon Latrail, 26, single, graduate of Arizona State, math major. Sharon's call is WA7DSW, Phoenix. The general manager of the Valley Ham Shack and secretary treasurer of Veritronics is on her way to see an important client. XE2RH, XE2RH, this is WB6KPN, Willie Baker's 6 King, Peter Nancy. XE2RH, 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 this is WB6KPN, Willie Baker's 6 King, Peter Nancy. The handle is Matt, WB6KPN, calling XE2RH and standing by. WB6KPN, XE2RH, Ensenada. Muy buenas tardes, Matt. Nice to hear you. You're coming very strong here into Ensenada. So back to you, WB6KPN, XE. You are in Ensenada, Mexico. I missed uh, your handle. I wonder if you could give me your handle down there. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Enrique. Enrique, well, the same as Henry. Uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, fine, Enrique. Well, I just put up a new antenna. Just put up a 40 meter V. And uh, it replaces the uh, vertical I used to use on this band. Uh, I wonder if you could give me an estimator reading. Go ahead. WB6KPNX, you are rich. Okay, Matt, we have terrific signal into Mexico right now. There's signal 5-9, steady, nice and clear. No problem in copying you. I'm transmitting you with a Swan 500 and uh, using a tri-bander antenna. What three bands uh, does that tri-band antenna that you have cover? Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Matt, it covers uh, from uh, 10, 15, uh, 20, and 40 meters. And, uh, well, I guess it's more than a tri-bender now. <laughs> well, I guess, uh, I guess... This uh, is the staple of ham radio. Person-to-person -person communication. The excitement of entering your ham shack and opening a window on the world. Yeah, that's on the west coast of uh, Baja, isn't it? Go ahead. And with nearly half a million amateur radio operators, it's not surprising that these two haven't talked to each other before. Oh, I think I've located it on the map, but BK. Uh, gee, it's, I think it's about time that I uh, get over to that field day site, so... I'm wondering if uh, possibly you'll uh, be on at dinner time. Uh, go ahead. Well, also myself, I have to go to work right now. I'm also in a hurry. But I'll try to be after uh, 6.30 or 7 o'clock after my work. I'll see if I can make a contact with you. So, 73s, y hasta mañana. WB6KPN, XE2RH. 73, and we'll see you later. XE2RH, this is WB6KPN. XE2RH, XE2RH in Ensenada. This is WA7DSW, mobile in Phoenix, Arizona. Do you have just one more minute? Uh, yes, go ahead. Thanks very Sometimes much. Sometimes Enrique back. has trouble I mean, squeezing lunch I'm into his lunchtime. Like, uh, He's a popular guy with a good, strong signal. Matt's radio club is meeting on this hill, surrounded by suburbia, to test their equipment in the field and make sure it's ready in case of emergency. It's also a good warm-up for a nationwide event called Field Day. Besides, what's better fun for a Saturday afternoon? 
I think that would be enough for now then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I need to connect to the uh, AC line. Well, we got about three or four minutes. If there's one thing you can be sure of, it's the generator won't start the first time. All right. A lot of these young hams build their own equipment and they really do know what's going on inside. This is the novice station. The first step in amateur radio to help newcomers get on the air easily and master one of the federal requirements for a license, the Morse code. This fairly accomplished beginner, WN6QDQ, even fashioned his own bug by hooking two army surplus straight keys back to back. The novice test with its simple requirements can be given by any amateur who has progressed to the senior grades of licenses. Several of these young hams already have their amateur extra class licenses, allowing them full operating privileges on any of the dozen or so ham bands. This is an antenna for the amateur 15 meter band one of the several bands that we hams use to talk around the world. One thing you can really be sure of when you're out in the field, even in dry old Southern California, is that it'll rain. Okay, ZLS in Livonia, Michigan. This is WI6LXN Portable 6. Okay, there is quite a bit of interference on your signal. You're about oh, Q4 and S7 here. Q4 and S7, the location is Woodland Hills, about 25 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles on the west end of the San Fernando Valley. My name is Matt, Mexico Alpha Tango Tango, Matt. We're operating sort of a field day type setup here, portable setup with the West Valley Amateur Radio Club. We have about four stations set up. We're using a Swan 350 to uh, a 15 meter portable quad up about uh, 20 feet, two element quad. Saudi so copy, K8ZLS in Livonia, Michigan. This is WA6LXN Portable 6. Well, this outing is a real success if you don't mind the rain, and they obviously don't. Now this is an actual field day when hams all over the North American continent once a year simultaneously fire up their emergency gear and test it. And if you think to yourself, boy, somebody has to organize all this, you're right, somebody does. The American Radio Relay League. It's also a contest. You try to talk to as many stations as possible in one weekend using only emergency power. Well, let's, let's loosen the guy wires and layer it on foot. During a real emergency, the hours of preparation pay off. And ham organizations like RACES, the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, really come into their own. The fire is approaching Mulholland Highway. They are considering evacuation of Calabasas Highlands. Request they put three amateur units in the field to assist in the communications. Notify the band to this effect. CPT to CPT Mobile. Operations requesting three amateur mobile units be sent to the Calabasas Highlands area to provide uh, communications for evacuation. This is signed Richter, Chief Communications Officer. CPT, clear. All right, Zyder, get your units. I'll set up the evacuation command post. All right. Bill, send Baker easy 6-6. Six, six. Brush and forest fires in Southern California are foreseeable, planned for emergencies. But most disasters defy planning. Here, the Earth itself has moved, dropping the ocean floor and then heaving it toward the surface, creating a huge tidal wave and driving it toward the coast of Alaska. In Valdez, a ship has just docked. It is Good Friday. 
School is out and the pier is alive with kids and dogs among the workmen. Suddenly, without warning, most of the water drains from Valdez Harbor. A deep chasm opens directly alongside the ship. The dock splinters and disappears in the rushing water. Then the tidal wave hits. Earthquake, tidal wave, shock waves. The most awesome force to hit North America in the 20th century. Hitting Anchorage at 5.36 p.m. just after the close of business. At 5.47, the first mobile units of the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service swing into action, ready to provide immediate communications. This is the strange calm that followed. A new department store in downtown Anchorage. Yesterday, this was an expensive neighborhood. The airport control tower. The story is repeated in Seward and Kodiak. All over Alaska, civil defense officials gather their shaken forces. Ham radio volunteers provide vital links in rescue communications. Portable equipment is gathered into makeshift message centers to find the missing and speed help to where it's needed in the aftermath of the worst disaster in Alaskan history. This is Bill Leonard reporting. Ever see an aluminum Christmas tree? Not like this one, I'll bet. This ham station is world famous for relaying messages and traffic from overseas, and it belongs to K7UGA. Handel, Barry. Hello, uh, Mrs. Martineau. Uh -huh. This is an amateur radio station in Arizona, and uh, we have your husband, the captain, on the other end of this hookup. And I'd like to ask you, have you ever talked before by amateur radio? I sure have. Oh, you have. Well, that's wonderful. We're always glad to hear that. And you know the magic word over. Fine. And don't forget it. And the next voice that you hear will be that of Captain Martineau. Okay. AI-8 Alpha Hotel. This is AFA-7 UGA. Ready to go. Roger, Robert, And this here is the captain's voice. Hi, over there. And this is Pete. And, uh, it's, uh... It's Thursday morning over here on the 27th, and uh, who am I talking to, Olga? You're talking to me, honey, and it sounds wonderful to hear your voice. We're just sitting here finishing dinner, and uh, are you in CCK? Over. I'm in CCK. I got back last Saturday, Mona, and uh, I just wanted to tell you that on the 1st of May, at about 10 o'clock at night, I want to see you at the uh, Fairmont Hotel in San Fran. I want to know if you'll be there, over. I sure will be there, that's for sure. Uh, it won't be on the 30th then, but I should be there the 1st of May. I love you so much, and we're so lonesome. Over. I love you too, darling. Uh, have you got your little friends there, and how are they? Over. Here's Marsha. Hi, Dad, over. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Well, most of the activities here at my ham shack outside Phoenix has been traffic in and out of Southeast Asia. Other stateside hams have specialized in messages from other parts of the world. For example, let's take Antarctica. Since ham operations began in Little America, thousands of phone patches have been completed. Now, this is obviously summertime. In the winter, about all you can see is the top of the antenna. And there are over a dozen shacks down here serving a very important purpose, morale. KC4USX. This is K6GJV in Alhambra, California. Okay, Charlie. Mrs. Hamilton's on the phone. She's talked on a phone patch before here in Los Angeles, ready to talk to her son in, in uh, Little America. So stand by down there in Little America. KC4USX. This is K6GJV, Alhambra, California. <laughs> USX, Little America. Fine, John. You're coming through great down here today. And we'll be ready to go in about five seconds. One of the stations down here even built what looks like an isolation booth, so the on-the-air conversation would seem more private and more personal. Ham radio is the only person-to-person -person link between the Antarctic crew and families and relatives back home, making life on the ice less lonely. And I'd say that's quite an accomplishment for a bunch of volunteers just enjoying their hobby. Here in... Uh, 
AFA-7 UGA. We have 25 volunteers who have been working this station since September of 1967, right around the clock, seven days a week, and they do a bang-up job. You might get the idea that all messages are handled by voice transmissions, but that's far from being the case. Morse code is still the most efficient way to get a message from one place to another. Now here's one of the top traffic handlers in the whole world, WB6, BBO. Louise is a longtime member of a very exclusive group. You have to send and receive a lot of messages to belong to the Brass Pounders League, and you've got to keep it up every day, every week, and every month. You know, radio's become so much a part of our everyday life that we're prone to think it's been here forever. It's sort of like taxes. I got an interest in amateur radio at a very early age. In fact, I got my first license when I was 13 in 1922, 6 BPI. But it isn't even 100 years since Marconi first sent messages by wireless. 1896 was that big year. And within a few years, Nameless pioneers with their ultra-modern one-tube receivers were tuning 200 meters and down, hoping to hear anything. And if everything worked, they heard it. This thing is aptly named a spark gap transmitter. It sent out a radio wave and a sound wave too. And if you weren't careful, you'd get hit in the head with a spark. This is one you could hear a block away. And we used to bury them in the backyard to keep the noise down. During the First World War, ham operations ceased, and more than 4,000 of them were pressed into service as signal corps technicians and operators. And it was during this period, in 1914, that ham radio was to form its official organization under the guidance of this man, Hiram Percy Maxim, 1AW. He founded the American Radio Relay League. Then, as today, the organization of, by, and for the radio amateur. After the war, Hiram Percy Maxim had to fight with Washington to get amateur radio going again. But fight he did, and he won. An incredible new era of discovery was launched. Before long, ham radio was being sent on expeditions, including several to the Arctic, forerunners of those in Little America, And this is K7XI, a real rare one. The experiments continued, and the fact is that nearly every major electronic discovery in those early days was made by a ham tinkering around, giving the impossible one more try. All over the world, hams kept building better, more sensitive, higher-powered gear with bigger antennas to trap that elusive station on Crete, or Andorra, or New Guinea, or for some, Cleveland. They had a standard piece of advice for each other. If your antenna didn't blow down last winter, it wasn't big enough. Amateur radio has come a long, long way, but it wasn't so long ago that some of us can't remember it. A practice started about that time continues today the exchanging of these. We call them QSL cards, and they are a reminder and a record of the contact. Some hams have cards from well over 300 different countries. But I think one of the most interesting ones that I have is from K4LIB, and the handle there is Arthur. Thanks, Barry. And I want to say that's some operation you've got out there. But speaking of QSLs, how's this for a paradise? VK4OF, Brisbane, Australia. It's pretty easy to spot a ham's house. It's right under one of these. Ken here might be talking with somebody across the street or across the ocean, like maybe YV10N in Maracaibo, Venezuela. Looks like almost as much gear as Barry, huh? Not to mention the antenna farm to go with it. I wonder how Jose's wife likes that barber pole in the front yard. Oh, uh, well. Venezuela's full of hams, of course, at least compared to Pitcairn Island, a thousand miles from anywhere. 
And except for a few houses, not much different than when Fletcher Christian first set foot on it in 1790. His boat dropped anchor right here in Bounty Bay. And nowadays, the mail boat puts in here once a month. Population 99 and one ham. If you're looking for new countries to talk to, boy, this one is a real find. VR6TC, as in Tom Christian. Great, 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 great grandson of old Fletcher. Now here's another rare guy, W4BPD. Gus's idea of a good time is to set up his gear on an island somewhere and really ham it up. Like here in the middle of the Arabian Sea. He's a real hero to DX chases. See the antenna on top of that castle? That's Gus in San Marino. There isn't a corner of the world where you can't find a ham. Yep, they even got one in the palace here at Gangtok, Sikkim. And look at this view through the trees and antennas in the backyard. That's Mount Everest. Yes, sir, you'll find ham antennae everywhere. Here's one on the front lawn of a Las Vegas hotel. Inside a convention, a ham fest, a chance to put some faces on some familiar voices. Over a thousand hams at this one from all over, as you can see. Room for a kilowatt rig in here. Let me tell you about this. A bunch of imaginative hams figured it'd be fun to have an amateur radio satellite. Well, they built it. Called it Oscar, short for Orbiting Satellite Carrying Amateur Radio. Wangled a ride into space for it, and it worked great. We've had several up there already, and more to come. This thing is unique, but it's only one of thousands of ham experiments. Surprised to find a ham teletype? Huh, one ham even converted his to print out in Braille. This is Tom O'Hara, W6ORG. Since hams played a big part in the development of television, it shouldn't be any surprise that they're still fooling with it. Some of them are even sending TV-type pictures to the South Pole. Showing you a little bit of video over here in the shack. W6ORG, WA6EPX. Yeah, real fine, Rudy. Let's take a look. Uh, see that echo-making uh, tape recorder of yours. Uh, WA6EPX, W6ORG. Yeah, real fine, Tom. W6ORG, this is wa 6 e West Covina. Yeah, Tom, uh, wonder how you're coming along with the rig for the Rose Parade. W6ORG, this is WA6EPX, audio and video. Okay, uh, that should be coming in on you there. And I'll uh, try and zoom in on this thing. I got the breadboard here, and uh, well, it's all kludged up. It seems to work and gets about five watts. That's about it, really. It's about 10 inches long and a couple of good high-power transistors, and uh, I think it'll put out a good picture in the uh, sheriff's helicopter for us there at New Year's. So that, I gotta get back to it, Rudy. I gotta swing some more solder on this thing, and uh, nice seeing you again on there, Rudy, and we'll check with you later. WA6EPX, W6ORG. 7-3, Tom, we'll see you. W6ORG, this is WA6EPX, West Covina, clear. Tom here is a real experimenter and a builder. Most of his equipment is home brew. Here, he's finishing a transistorized television transmitter, and that's the whole thing right there. One of the few places with more construction projects than Tom is the experimental lab at the American Radio Relay League headquarters. And they'll try anything. If that antenna works, I'll keel over. That's better. One of the regular beams at W1AW, World Ham Headquarters, ARRL, Newington, Connecticut. This gadget sends out Morse code for practice, so newcomers and novices can build up their speed. And in addition, code classes are held regularly at schools and clubs such as the Talcott Mountain Science Center. This classroom type instruction really does the job when it's backed up by code practice transmitted by W1AW. With all this help available, 
It's really pretty easy to become a ham these days, and that's the way it should be. So before I say so long in 73s, let me pass along my traffic. These young people are having a ball because amateur radio is a tremendous hobby. Great fun and a service to your fellow man. And that's a really winning combination, right? So this is K4LIB, 73. Is this frequency in use? XE2RH, XE2RH. XE2RH, this is WB6KPR. We'll be back here in 6KPR and at the... Are you around, Enrique? Go ahead. Uh, WB6KPN. This is XE2RH in Ensenada. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Matt. Nice to hear you. I've been listening for you, and fortunately, uh, I was able to pick you up. And uh, please tell me how you came out with the club meeting. So back to you, WB6KPN.